Ms. Horsley, we now proceed to Congressman Doug Glamburn of Colorado. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for having this hearing. And I first want to say God bless each one of you for your service. I have the honor of representing the Air Force Academy, and after the whiteboard incident, I went over there to see what the whiteboards look like. And they're actually real small. They're about the size of this piece of paper right outside the dormitory doors uh, that each person has. Mr. Barry, was anything wrong with a cadet, whatever his role or position, writing an inspirational Bible verse on his whiteboard? Uh, no. Uh, in, in fact, Mr. Lamborn, uh, the, that was really the, the issue that I raised with the, the attorney there, was that they, they had stopped reading Air Force Instruction 1-1, at least the, the version that existed at the time. Uh, it's been since revised. But they stopped reading it at paragraph 211, which says that the requirement of government neutrality toward religion. And I said, what about the very next paragraph, which says that airmen are, fr are able to freely practice their own beliefs? Uh, and, and, and what about the protections that exist in DOD Instruction 1300.17? And the response, uh, unfortunately, I received was, well, this is not you know, my policy, this is Air Force policy uh, coming from the Pentagon. So it was a very unsatisfactory answer. but. Uh, you're absolutely right, uh, Mr. Lamborn, that that cadet had every right under our Constitution to express his religious belief or no belief at all. And we've talked a little bit about leadership, and my concern is that if taken to an extreme, someone who is a leader and has a religious component to his or her life of any of a multitude of religions, and to not be able to ever discuss that would be dishonest with other people. Do you agree with that? It, Yes, sir. And, and in fact, that uh, reminds me of the very last thing that my commanding officer said to our unit in, in Afghanistan before we uh, departed friendly confines, and that was that we were to go, we, that we had been physically prepared to fight uh, the enemy, but that it was up to each of us to make sure that we were mentally and spiritually prepared to fight, that we were to fight with a clean heart and a clean conscience. Mr. Dr. Cruz, I offered an amendment to the NDAA this last summer, which was uh, accepted by the whole House, and it required the Air Force to rewrite its religious liberty regulations. Uh, what is your opinion on the new Air Force regulation language? We are very grateful for the new language. We believe that it brings th that Air Force policy more closely in line with the intent of your committee with 533. It uh, I'm not an attorney and don't play one on TV, but my reading of it, under, uh, I understand it to be more in line with federal law, RIFRA. Uh, it uses some of the RIFRA language that I think helps, will help commanders and JAGs to be better able to make decisions like the White Ford incident, like this dear Colonel's article that, that there's no reason why people of faith, regardless of their rank, cannot be able to express that faith while they're wearing the uniform. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Weber, you gave us a quote in your testimony to the effect that being offended doesn't mean being coerced. If someone like Mr. Weinstein is offended by an evangelical Christian, whether it's an, a chaplain or an airman or an officer, talking about his faith, does that translate into being coerced? Congressman, uh, it does not. Um, you know, as, as, as I mentioned, uh, and this comes from the Supreme Court this year, that offense itself uh, does not mean there's coercion. And, um, you know, I think that's um, a policy and a principle that could be easily applied and to uphold um, the rights of all to, to live out their lives in accordance with their conscience and beliefs. Well, I'm going to yield back, but uh, once again, I thank all five of you for your service. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 